This is the R38 Outdoor Hatchet from the Chinese company Ned Foss. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on it, keep watching. All right, just before we get started, a few things I want to thank Ned Foss for sending out the R38 Outdoor Hatchet so that I could share it with you. Now, the quick backstory is I originally wasn't interested in one of their hatchets. I did reach out to Ned Foss to see if they would send me one of their knives that looked as if it might have application as a bushcraft knife. And I was doing that on a recommendation from one of my viewers who commented on an earlier video, an earlier knife review video, suggesting I take a look at them. Now, Ned Foss replied that they were unable to send any of their knives to me here in Canada, even though they are sold here in Canada, but they'd be unable to send me one directly. But they did offer to send me this hatchet, the R38 Outdoor Hatchet. So I took a few days to decide whether or not I wanted to review a hatchet. When I looked at the hatchet on Amazon, it certainly looked very nice. It has uh, what appears to be all great features for it. So based on that, I decided to take a chance and accept it. So I've had this hatchet now for about a month and I have been using it primarily for splitting wood for a fire that I'm not allowed to have yet because of the fire ban, as well as making a new chopping log. So I've put it through a number of tasks um, and I have some very definite thoughts on it. Now, I want to be clear, this is not an initial unboxing type of review, but neither is it a long-term review. Like I said, I've got about a month's worth of use on it, so I can give you my impressions on it now, but I am going to keep on using this for a number of months before I really give it a my full review, if it's required. Now, let me explain what I mean. Um, everything looks great about the hatchet. I don't see any anything to complain about in terms of the quality control on the hatchet itself. Having said that, when I looked at a lot of other reviews, both Amazon reviews and online reviews, it was a real mixed bag. Some of them, some of the people loved their hatchet and others just criticized it severely for quality control issues. Things like the head was misshapen in the forging process or the head was on crooked on the haft or the haft came loose very short time or the, the metal itself started chipping out after first use. Well, I haven't seen any of those issues, but I have identified a few things that I think are worth uh, being known about this before you make a decision to buy one. So what I thought I'd do is I'd just bring the camera down a little, show you the hatchet, go over the briefest of specifications. I will put all of that in the video description, of course, and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. All right, just before I focus in on the ax itself, I wanna talk about the mask and a few other things first. First off, one of the reasons why I thought this was a something worth taking a look at is it seemed to have all the features of more expensive hatchets but at a much reduced price. So this is listed on Amazon US for $49.99 and I saw it on Amazon Canada for $69.99. So it's not super cheap. Uh, you can buy them cheaper ones at the hardware store but you know it's not super expensive for what it looks like which i'll talk more about in a moment i think it may be a reasonable price and so far i still feel it is a reasonable price for the quality that you're getting there are still a few things about it I think need to change, or at least you need to be aware of. But I did say let's talk about the mask. This is one of the features I thought was rather nice. They included this nice leather mask. It is real leather. Dome snap, you can see, it goes on easily over the bit. Snaps on. And it has just a nice little, what they call a Bushcraft logo stamped into it. Okay, we'll throw that apart aside. Now, I will give you the specs as I mentioned, but first let's focus in on the head. So it is listed as hammer forged. Um, I have no reason to doubt it. I know that some of the bargain basement axes that you can get from China are cast, and you can usually see the sprue lines or the cast lines over the hatchet. I can see none of that on this hatchet, and I can't see where, if it had been there, it was ground away. It does look as if it has some of the markings of something that's been hammer forged, and um, I'll take them at the word that it is, in fact, hammer forged. Now, they refer to the steel as uh, number sign 55 and I will assume and that's all it is is an assumption I can't say that this is valid that that would mean it's 1055 carbon steel and They say it is hardened to between 51 and 55 on the Rockwell scale Which is appropriate for an axe or a hatchet they go on to say that it is only the first 0.6 of an inch so just 
basically the grind right here, just over half an inch. That's all they tempered hard, which is, would be to say that the rest of the ax has been left soft or annealed. I don't know, maybe so. If that's the case, then this is where all the tempering is. This is where, of course, this is where you need it. You don't need the whole ax head to be tempered. Sometimes though, ax makers will temper them in a, uh, how should I say, a, hardest at the edge and then working its way back and getting a little bit softer. Some will actually harden the hammer pawl so that you can use it as a hammer. So I guess what I'll take from that is if this is in a softer state, the rest of the bit or the rest of the head is don't use this to as a hammer for hammering in nails and don't be hitting it any, with anything other than a piece of wood on the back because if it is that soft, the eye will start to open up over time. No issues so far, but it, again, it's only been a month, right? Okay, so the finish on this is a bead blast, and uh, you know, it's attractive, it's clean looking, everything has been rounded off, it likely was tumbled before they polished the edge on it. It's not sharp enough to do anything with, but certainly not sharp enough to cut yourself with either. So it's, you know, it's it looks good. Now, I will say that it came dull. I could not run my finger up and down this now. It's sharper, but it was dull. You may May consider it functionally sharp. If you used it to split things, you could probably get away with it. But if you, most people want their axes and hatches sharper than this one came. Well, I spent oh a good 30 or 40 minutes on each side of this with my axe puck, just round and around and around and around and around until I got a burr on both sides and then eventually wore it off. It is sharp. It is not razor sharp, but it's at least functionally sharp. It will shave wood to a degree. It's not It's not a knife, right? Okay, I want to put that out there. A lot of people talk about doing feather sticks with their axe. Yes, you can, but why? You know, if you have a knife, it's the tool to use to make feather sticks. If you don't have a knife, yeah, then of course you're going to have to rely on your axe to do that. And so it's a good skill to at least practice on. And this one will do that. I'd point this out, well, might as well now, forged into it probably with the a maker's mark and there's the Ned Fox logo. So that's, that looks pretty good. Now, uh, here's the first thing I want to say. This is not a deal breaker by any means, but they have misnamed the head shape as a Hudson Bay. If anybody, if you know anything about axes, we know this is not a Hudson Bay. I don't know if there's a proper name for the shape of this head bit, and most axe heads do have a name that identifies the shape, but I refer to this as a Scandinavian design, like a Holtzbrooks or uh, Holt fours or uh, any number of axe heads like that with the ears on the sides for support. I think it's more like a Scandinavian design than a Hudson Bay. Certainly not a Hudson Bay. Let's put it that way. All right, let's go on to the handle because really this is very attractive. At least it looked it in the picture until I got it up close and I'll, I'll explain why. First off, first thing I want to say is mounting the head on the haft, they did a very good job. As I look down the bit, it's center lines Almost perfect, almost perfect. If I look down, I'll see it, the line just off of center about here. That's not bad. I've got a, a good high quality name brand ax that actually does is no better than this in terms of lining it up. It's not so bad that you're going to really miss your mark when you, when you use it. It could be better, but not by much. Anything better than this has probably been done by the hands of a master craftsman and like the custom ax. So I'm not disappointed with that at all. The fit of the haft into the eye is spot on. Let's see if we can show this. There are no gaps here at all. There is a little bit of shaving of the wood here to suggest that it went in pretty tight there. No gaps at the front. And there are no gaps at the top. Now, there is both a wooden wedge and two tubular wedges. I'm not sure they needed that. And they're actually very close together. I would have thought they would have tried to space them a little further apart. My only guess for why there are two tubular wedges is it may have been in response to some of the complaints that I saw with people saying the ax head was becoming loose uh, very short after they started using it. So double down and use two, well, a total of three wedges to mount it on. All right, so a month later, no movement on this for me, but I'll be watching that for sure. And if it does start to move, then I'm for sure going to mention that. Now look at the color. A nice burnt orange color, right? It looks like it may have been roasted or something. It's not. It's a stain and lacquer. That's what it's on. And you can see that best around the head. Can you see where the stain drips are and didn't quite make it down to the 
well actually there's some overflow into the, onto the head at the bottom right there so yeah it's it's a stain and a lacquer and uh, trust me it's going to be coming off before I come back for any for, for future review on this because it's not terrible like it's not over grippy if my hands get wet and I'm using it I don't know that I will get blisters but I, I prefer to get down to the natural wood and then put some linseed boiled linseed oil on it or something uh, now this is listed as beech wood. Now that's not used often on axes. Most of the time people prefer ash or uh, hickory for axes, but they refer to this as beech wood. Now it may be because it is beech wood, but I think it's indication of something else. I'm hoping this will show up when I put it on camera. First off, grain orientation is uh, just a little bit better than 45 degrees. And I won't know until I edit this if this is going to show up. But what I want you to look at is the width of the grain. How many bands in there are in there. This is outrageously poor. This is a very soft wood. Even for beech, this is soft. Now, my understanding of what causes that to be that wide apart, the, the growth rings on this, is because it's forced growth. It grows really fast and is not grown in a cold climate. So each year as the wood, as the tree grows and, cr and creates a new ring, uh, the rings are wider and as a result that's where you get that width. Now what's the big deal? It shouldn't matter too much anyway and likely it doesn't matter on a 15 inch hatchet. That's likely not a huge deal. But what I want to say about that is grain orientation aside it'd be nice if it was perfectly vertical but again on a 15 inch hatchet you're not going to put that much impact on the hat, head of this that will go down through the handle and split it out. I don't see any run out so I don't suspect that it's weakened in that manner. But here's the thing, the handle, the shape of it is nice, but it is huge. It is just way, way too thick in this dimension and way, 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 way too thick in this dimension. Now, here's the contradiction, right? I have XL to double XL hands. I complain all the time that most factory made knives are too small for me, that I need something that's usually custom made or at least adapt myself to the smaller handle of knives. You would think I would like that. Well, it's just the opposite when it comes to axes. I prefer a nice small handle, something that is much smaller than this. The smaller, almost the smaller, the better. And what I think is happening is, is because the wood the grain in the wood is so spaced out that it's going to take more wood to make up the strength. Had the grain been more closely brought together, then, um, then you wouldn't need the handle to be so thick. Now that's more theory than it is anything else, but I'll tell you this. I have a German hatchet that I bought off of Amazon, Alschenkopf. I've never reviewed it, but I likely will bring it out at some point. I picked it up to compare it with this because weight-wise they were very similar, and the handle is a, just half the size in terms of thickness all over, and the grain more than twice as dense in the grain pattern and a little bit straighter as well. Maybe I will do a separate review on that. I might even throw a picture in of the two, the butts of these things side by side so you can see the grain patterns on it. Okay, this, those things that I'm mentioning are not deal makers. As long as the ax or hatchet continues to perform, does not split apart, does not come loose, does not chip out, then they're not a, a big deal. But some of the complaints I saw, that's exactly what was taking place. Now for me, I, you, you may find this differently. I prefer to have that smaller grip down here so that I can even close my fist a little tighter around it before I do the long-term review. I may, well, I will be taking the lacquer off and I may well be thinning the wood out with a rasp just to get it smaller right here at the base more than anywhere else. So, what have I been doing with it? I have been splitting hardwood or wood for, well hardwood, it is hardwood, for a fire when I'm eventually the fire ban is over. I have been doing some carving with it. It's not bad for carving. I can hold it up nice and tight and get up behind it. It's comfortable. There's no uncomfortable edges up here at all. It works for feathering barely. It's not a knife, remember. It is, takes a while to get sharp with a, with a puck, an ax puck. I think that's an indication of a good hard temper on the edge. So that's pretty much everything I have to say about it at this time. All right, I almost forgot to give you the specifications for the hatchet. And again, I did say I would put them in the video description, but let me give you the basics of it. Overall weight for this is 47.23 ounces. Now the, the website did not give the head weight, but 
gee, it felt heavy. So I reached out to them and asked, 750 grams. That's that's pretty heavy for a 15 inch hatchet. You may like that. In fact, I kind of do like it, but I just tested out some other hatches, same length that were 600 grams. Most hatchets in this length are 650 grams. So at 750 grams, that's a pretty heavy head weight, which does aid with the splitting. It's not a good carving ax because the weight is just a bit too heavy there. Overall length is 15 inches. I'll give you all the other dimensions for the head and everything else in the video description. Okay, again, I, this is a meant to be a relatively short video that with my just four weeks or a month's worth of experience, experience on it, and I'm hesitating to give you a more of a review of it, mostly because of the comments I saw on other reviews where things went wrong with this, and I just didn't want to recommend it without giving it a lot more use to see if, I, if it uh, will stand up to the test of time. Again, in the four weeks that I've been using it, it's been great, other than just a little bit too thick in my hand. It splits well, it carves well, it does everything else. I mean, it's not chipping, it's not rolling, it's maintaining its edge. Yeah, everything so far has been good. Now, the only question I have is, did they send me a reviewer's model? Something that was gone through quality control at a higher level than goes out for average. I don't even like to say things like that because I hope that's not the case. Hopefully I just got one right off of the production line and they didn't hand pick one for me. I've heard that said about other reviewers getting hand picked models. I really don't know. I have no idea what I just take what's sent me and uh, trust that they're just giving me a production model. But uh, anyway, I guess time will tell on this. If you have any comments or questions or any experience with the Ned Foss hatchet, then please put that in the comments section below. I'll put the links and all the other information in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.